Well, good morning. Third night in the camper van last night. And if, I, if I'm looking a little damp and a little red-eyed, uh, it's not because I just got off a flight from New York. Uh, it's because I've just had a shower. Yes, paid a pound for a shower. What, what do you think about that, you uh, camper vanners? I, I was in kind of in two minds, but actually this is the Abbey Fields uh, campsite, which is near Kings Lynn, a place called East Walton. And uh, it's very cheap actually so it's a cheap well it seems cheap to me anyway compared with the prices of some of the other places i've looked at um so it's uh quite cheap uh, but you pay a pound for a shower so i suppose you could also have a more expensive campsite where a shower is included in the price but of course if you don't have a shower you've paid for something that you've not made use of anyway a uh, pound for a shower so uh, i'm looking clean now, I wanted to show you uh, something which I think uh, you're going to find pretty remarkable, actually. So just wait a minute. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Okay. So you're thinking, well, what are we looking at, Julian? Looks like the inside of a Toyota Alford camper van. Yes, but I'm focusing on the windows. And why am I focusing on the windows? Because there is no condensation. Absolutely no condensation. Now you're going to say, oh, come on, Julian, you, you've been up for a while, you've had a shower, you've cleaned the windows, you've put the air conditioning on, you've got rid of the condensation. Don't give us all this nonsense because we're not going to believe it. Oh, that's a rather fat Julian there in the, uh, uh, in the reflection. Anyway, um, no, I have not done any of those things. So uh, back to me, back to me, Keith. So how did I achieve it? Uh, well, I did a couple of things. Um, first of all, I had uh, the window, front window, slightly open. Uh, I also had the pop top up and the insert, not the insulation, but the kind of window covering. And when you open that, all there is is mesh on the other side. So there was some air coming in through that. Uh, and the van was, was pretty warm during the night, which has not been on previous times that I've slept. But my secret my secret, which I'm going to share with you, all right, uh, and you only have to pay a euro. Uh, I'm afraid I don't accept uh, payment in any other currencies except the euro. So if you pay a euro uh, to my account, I'll give you the secret. All right, so I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you the secret, and then you're going to pay me the euro. Okay, are we clear on that? I'm going to tell you the secret, and then you're going to pay me the euro. Right. This is what it did. Condensation is caused when warm air that you breathe out during the night uh, meets a cold surface, i.e. a glass, and then condenses and turns into water vapour. So you get, as you know, kind of uh, kind of mist, uh, and then you get water, and it runs down the screen, and it's really quite horrible. So the way to counteract that, this is a secret that you're going to pay me a euro for, don't breathe. Okay. So every hour, I would set my alarm, uh, I would wake up, and I would not breathe, not breathe, for 15 minutes. Okay. Now you can breathe in, you just can't breathe out, all right? So 15 minutes every hour. Sleep is a little bit disrupted. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, uh, perhaps you might want to pay me uh, 50 cents instead of the whole euro because you're not happy with this kind of explanation. But every hour, you set the alarm, you wake up, and you don't breathe out for 15 minutes. And there's a solution. No condensation. So um, you can be grateful if you wish, um, but pay me, the, pay me this 50 cents or the euro. It's up to you. Anyway, now for some breakfast. Now you're going to want to see this. First of all, we have a kettle here, collapsible kettle. This is in its uncollapsed state. Remove that atlas out of the way. And I'm going to fill the kettle with some water, but I'm going to be quite clever and quite, um, uh, what's the word, water saving, because this is the uh, insulated uh, cup mug that I use for my coffee. So I'm only going to put as much water in the kettle as I actually need in the uh, cup. So let's get over to the sink. Hopefully up the sink now. And water in the cup. No more than is absolutely necessary. So now, I remove the lid from the kettle and I pour the water into the kettle. And I 
nicely done. That looks very good. Lid on the kettle. And now to get the gas going, assuming I can manage that. Uh, it's important to let the gas run for a little bit before you try and light it so that it has time to get through the pipe. And there are, it lights first time, which is what it's getting to be so good at this. So we'll just um, pause the video there while that is boiling. And I'm using the coffee bag. This is a Taylor's Flying Start coffee bag, most five, it's called. Quite nice. Not necessarily the greatest coffee I've ever had, but quite convenient. Opening the bag now. And there is the bag of coffee. Now, if you touch the screen just, sorry, just there, you see on my finger, touch the screen there, and the new uh, YouTube algorithm, uh, which Nadine Doris is not happy with, it's called smell vision Touch the screen just there, and you'll be able to smell the coffee in the coffee bag. That's very good, isn't it? Putting milk now. Uh, this is moo, skimmed milk. Uh, and this is long life milk. Not quite sure how long it lasts for. Uh, but it's drawn. Do you draw milk from a can? Uh, anyway, it's drawn from cows that have been alive for longer than 40 years. Okay, that's the definition of long life milk. You may not know that. So I'm now going to put some milk in the cup. Reasonable amount of milk, so it's a bit of a latte. Now you might say to yourself, well Alan, hold on a minute, Julian, how are you going to get all the water in because you've now got that milk in? Which is a fair point, which is a fair point, which I'm not going to dwell on for longer than this necessary. I'll put the lid on, just in case I tip it over. I'm ready to put water in. Now the kettle is starting to boil. I don't know if you can see the steam coming out of the spout there. That shows us that the kettle is uh, about to boil. Very quick, actually, very quick system. You may be familiar with kettles boiling quickly. That may not be entirely uh, new or even exciting for you, but um, you know, us van lifers get our excitement where we can find it. We have to find our excitement where we can get it. So, taking the lead of that one we can the um, fault of perspective. So, position that. There now, the kettle is boiling over nicely, so I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to pour it into you see what I'm doing there? I'm pulling it into the cup. Oh, there's the bag floating up to the surface. And one of the, the great things about this cup, by the way, it's a it's a Bowden cup. Not been sponsored by Bowden. Uh, other similar cups are available. But the thing about it is that it's insulated. So I'm going to put the lid on like that. And um, when I had my previous cup, which was which was not insulated, uh, I was accosted by some uh, Extinction Rebellion youngsters who super glued themselves to my cup and said, "You need to get insulation for your cup." So I did. Uh, they kept the old cup because it was still stuck to their fingers, but uh, my new cup is insulated. And now I've put the lid on, and I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, leave it there to let the coffee, uh, get, let the coffee mingle, let the coffee brew, um, and it's going to develop into a nice cup of coffee. So, um, uh, um, amuse yourselves while you're waiting. Uh, with my coffee, I'm going to have a couple of these Les Brioches Pano Chocolat, uh, which I bought in a garage. It's the, not in a garage, but 
you know, in a shop attached to a garage. Um, with my coffee. So they're very French. Very French breakfast on this French campsite. Well, it's not French, obviously. It's a British campsite, but we're still in Europe. Well, no, we're not, actually. Why aren't we in Europe? Oh, yes, because... 52% uh, of the population decided they didn't want to be in Europe. They wanted to be in Norfolk. So, uh, if you enjoy it. Well, actually, Norfolk's, actually, Norfolk's quite nice, just despite what you read. There are some... It's amazing how... People need, seem to know something about Norfolk, which well, I'm, I'm not going to repeat here because it's kind of a family show. But there is one fact. Well, it may not be a fact, actually. But there's one fact, factoid, maybe, um, that everybody seems to know about Norfolk, which may or may not be true. Um, I cast no aspersions on Norfolk people. Anyway, they got me rather distracted. I'm going to have a brioche, um, not a brioche, but a pan of chocolate or two, or maybe even three, along with my coffee. And that's the pan of chocolate. So I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. Won't be long. You were going to say you said that with your mouth full, Julian. You shouldn't have done that. Right, you're right. I apologise. It's all right. But it's got that long life taste. You know the, the 40 year old long life milk taste? Uh, this hasn't got, you know, 40 year old pan of chocolate taste because that would be weird um, but it does have that kind of preserved taste do you know what I mean and it's you see that I mean it's got chocolate in it it's got a lot of butter in it does it anyway stop complaining Julian just be grateful there are people in the world who don't have any breakfast you've got two pan of chocolate and a cup of coffee so you know, count your blessings okay sorry stop sniffing this is the Abbey Fields campsite, and I think you'll agree, it's a very nice place. Nice broad green pitches, electrical connections, walks, fields, horses over there. Here's the Alphard. Very nice. Picnic bench there, in case you want to have a picnic, and a um, thing to have a fire. Very nice campsite. I can recommend it. Abbey Fields, it's called, near East Walton, near Kings Lynn. And the added benefit here of the Abbey Fields campsite is that you get to observe a cabinet meeting with uh, some donkeys. Actually, do, do you know what? I'm not sure they are donkeys. I think they're horses. Are they donkeys? Or are they horses? Leave a comment down below. You'd think I would know the difference between a donkey and a horse. And frankly, I thought I did. But when I drove here last night, past these animals, I thought, oh, look, donkeys. And I said to my wife, and I said to my wife, oh, there's donkeys here. Are they donkeys or are they horses? They're a long way away. Anyway, I'm going to say a couple of donkeys getting ready for a cabinet meeting. There's Nadine Dice there on the right hand side. Therese Coffee on the left hand side uh, chatting about what they're going to say in the cabinet meeting. Is Nadine Dice going to say, when is YouTube going to get rid of all those algorithms? Or are they discussing Channel 4, a government owned state broadcaster? Who knows? Anyway, cabinet meeting getting ready to start. <laughs>